Hey guys, what is going on? We're going to talk about something really interesting today. Um, this is the about the fake Sonichu 11 that was posted around 2010. Yeah, somebody did make a fake Sonichu um, issue 11 while Chris was on his long, long hiatus from Sonichu after issue 10, I believe. So, we're going to read what it says here because this whole thing is about Sanchu issue 11, but we're only going to focus on the hoax. So, and there's Alc Benson Lear's rendition, but that's not it. On April, on the 24th of April, 2010, the sysop of the Wikipedia um, uh, uploaded two new episodes of Sanchu issue 11. This D story is picked up from where Sanchu 10 left off and continued the dark and downbeat tone. Bubbles and Angelica were killed in the bombing of the Quickbill Mall, Mall Wart. Sandy Rose was run over by an inattentive driver while committed suicide in a fit of grief and rage. Christine and Robbie are, were killed and Sarah badly injured when they drank drink, drink cleaner. Rose Jew smothered her prematurely crippled daughter with a pillow. Sonichu demanded a divorce. And Rizal Sneasel decided to show some infants his seven inch, light, inch lightning rod. An archive of the pages can be seen here. Surprisingly, Punchy and Blake were, are nowhere to be seen nor mentioned in either part of this hoax comic. That is interesting. Surprised they weren't mentioned in there, considering they did have some decent sized roles, especially the especially Blake. Part one: The comic picks up one morning in the Sanju household as Rose Chu cooks breakfast. Sanju and her discuss their bed romp last night in front of Robbie, who ponders on what a seven-inch whitening wad is. Sanju informs his son that he will show him later on. Ew. Chris pops up to inform you that Sancho is not a bed of work, but instead teaching his young son on sex, so he'll be prepared for the young Rosie he will one day he engage in sex with. Magic Jared mentally informs Sancho of an attack on the mall. Slow wheel being behind the attack, he can sense Angelica and bubbles inside, but a psychic barrier prevents him from seeing any further. Sancho tells him to get the Quickville Power Rangers. He will be there after he finishes breakfast. Sancho gets to the mall and meets with Officer Perez, who pretty much sums up what Magic Chan said one page prior. Wow, suddenly shows up. Back at home, Reginald is at the Sonichu house for no explained reason, and young Robbie decides to ask him about a seven-inch lightning rod. Reginald, being the modest gentleman, he is whips out his penis for Robbie and says, that's a play with it. Robbie declaring he wants to put it in his mouth. Rose interrupts and rightfully yells at Reginald. The scene easel makes a sorry excuse that Angelica had not done her womanly duties of sexually pleasing him in over three months and apologizes for exposing himself. Rose implies she will aid him in his knees and sends her children off to go watch Family Guy Blu-rays, the perfect show for children. I'm surprised she didn't ask, she didn't tell them to watch Attack on Titan. On the bottom page, on the bottom of the page is an axe ad for that delicious smell. Is, I don't think, is delicious spelled wrong? Yeah, it's spelled wrong. Weird. Once in her room, Rose Chu preaches to Reginald about how he should not seek adultery for his urges. Rose Chu sees the air of his ways and thanks Rose Chu for the support. He mentally laments about Rose Chu's beauty, her kindness, her body, and lust for her, knowing that she is Sonichu's. Yeah, he has shown no concern or, nor worry that Angelica is being held hostage at all. Chris takes up a full page with an American flag to inform the readers that Rose Chu is indeed faithful to Sonichu and educates the readers on the dangers of cheating, such as diseases and children born with homosexuality, and how the main Rose Chu gals freely express their feminism in the bedroom with their respective men. Or respective, I think, is what he means. Back at the mall, the battle has been fought completely off screen as well. And Sonichu talk about the aftermath. Magic Chan mentally informs that he has found hostages while Sonichu with Sonichu saying that they will need ambulances and transportation for the homeless to get to the, go to the soup hotels in Quickville. They take a moment to discuss how great the mayor is at attending to the people of the town and go back to the task of finding Sawil. Sanchu finds her on the next page and punches her a few times, declaring a great battle. Sawil flies away on a nimbus cloud. Well, with Sanchu flipping her off as she leaves, so we'll declaring though that she has given up. There are more surprises in store. The mall war blows up as Sanchu and Wild watch in horror. Magi, Magi Chan, who has somehow survived, informs them that Angel, uh, Angelica, not Anglica, Angelica and Bubbles are dead, along with 350 others. So 175 innocent, 20, 23 jerk cops, 47 Jane cops, and 127 were hypnotized by the wheel. Three Power Rangers also died the valiantly. Sanchu swears on his dead friends that he will get to the wheel for her crimes. The fir first part ends on Magichan informing Reginald on Angelica's death. She died burying tamp buying tampons and or pads, as Magi implies, and how the Sneasel should invest in a sex call while he partakes on a love quest to replace Angelica. Shit, that is, that's cold. <laughs> Reginald shows no sorrow for his lost love, and he blames, as he blames Sanchu for a moment, 
but now finds himself free to make the moves on Rose Chu. <laughs> Sonichu and Rose Chu in The Dangers Above in part two. The next episode opens on Wild and Sandy who are adjusting to living without Simone Lo around. Sandy leaves for school and Wild tells her to be good and study hard. Um, oh yeah, Simone was dead. I, I, I sorry, I was just I almost forgot this at this time Simone was actually dead and not alive. So and not living with him. So I kind of forgot. I thought she had blown up at the mall with the others. Sandy slips her earbuds in to listen to her favorite band, Christian and the Hedgehog Boys. <laughs> Unfortunately, she is so distracted by her shit music. She walks in front of a speeding car. The driver was texting and driving, but suddenly sees the tragedy he caused. The next page cuts to her funeral. Asanchu and Rosu pity wild, pity wild, losing his wife and then his daughter. Rosu attempts to empathize and offer support to Wild. Wild, overcome with grief and, grief and anger, lashes out at her, saying she's never lost anything while he has now lost his entire family. Rosu is in shock of his anger, but Sanju tells her to shrug it off since he's in grief. He answers his phone during the funeral with, with a frantic Heather on the other end. The kids got into the cleaners while Heather used the bathroom, and all three kids had drunk all of the drink cleaner. What? Sanju and Rosu rushed to the hospital and learned to fade their children. Robbie and Christine died from ingesting the cleaner, but Sarah lived since she's the oldest and was, and was not fatally afflicted, even though she only had she's only a few months older than Christine, and all the kids were the same size. However, Sarah offered, suffered major brain damage and would need assistance for the rest of her life. Sanju and Rose Chu grieve as two headstones take up the rest of the page for the two, two children. Later, Sanju falls under stress with all the medical bills. Rose Chu suggests he go get help from the mayor, to which Sanju says it's no use. Chris has been missing for a month and is too busy with his video games and the wallflower to care. Sanju mentally blames Rose Chu for the kids' fates as she left the cleaner out where they can easily get to it. And Rose Chu mentally laments that Sanju doesn't even attempt to understand her. Next scene cuts to a few weeks later, later, later as Marvie Blaziken discussed, discusses with Wild the legal actions for, after Sandy's death. The driver was convicted of texting and driving, but since Sandy was witnessing was witness jaywalking at the time of her own death, the driver was not convicted of involuntary manslaughter. Is that how that works? I'm not sure that should be how it works. The driver is only fined for running a stop sign and is put on probation for three months. Wild gains some self-awareness and yells about how terrible the laws are in his home on the town, they have useless things like dating education, ironically, where Wild met someone, which shouldn't he shouldn't think is useless then. Marvy suggests they present the mayor with a petition so he can review quick bill laws, to which Wild responds saying and saying that's hopeless. All of Chris's documents are signed with DS consoles. Wild excuses himself to be alone. The next page shows him with a gun declaring that he no longer wants to live and ends his life. Sanju drinks at TGI Fridays, verbally lashing out the bartender to get him his fourth Long Island iced tea. Angelica appears to console Sanju, most likely a drunk, as a drunk hallucination by Sanju, as he flirtingly invites her to sit down with him. Meanwhile, Rose Chu is at home grieving over Sarah's status, as she is tired of having to give Sarah 24-7 assistance as Sarah lays in bed drooling and urinating. Rose Chu thinks about how she dreamt of seeing her daughter walk down the aisle and start a family, but now she is a slow in the mind, which is Chris's word for mentally challenged people. Rose Chu is angry about having no money to buy shoes and being forced to eat tuna out of a can. She has reached her end and smothers Sarah with a pillow, mentally begging for forgiveness for her daughter. Sanchu comes home and is informed of her death. The two parents seem to shrug off their final child's death heartlessly. Rose Chu glad he doesn't suspect anything, and Sanchu actually relieved with her death. In a big text wall, the couple talk about their true feelings. Sanchu cannot stop blaming her for the kid's death, and Rose Chu re revealing she never really loved him. He was foolish they, they got together just because they looked the same. And she had felt like nothing but a sex object to him and just a prize for him to show off to his friends. She agrees to a divorce, but declares that Sanju will pay for ruining her life. The episode ends with a PSA from Chris to the audience about how an act of carelessness can snowball into tragic events. It reminds them all to have safe sex and to know the difference between lust and love. The reception. Despite an overwhelmingly positive response to the new pages, Chris clarified in a rage-filled quick blog update that they were the work of a troll. During the Great Rampage 2.0, where when the Wikipedia was hacked for the second and final time, the pages were restored, but the Wikipedia had died the next day. So that was it. And um, I was going to say there was no way to get it, but apparently there's an archive of the pages can be seen here. Yep, yeah, this is it.
Um, yep, that this this is it all right. Um, and it kind of looks like Chris's style actually. So that is going to be it for today. Um, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, share the video, watch my other ones, and subscribe to the channels. I'm trying to hit a thousand by the end of the month. And uh, be sure to stay beautiful because I most certainly will not be doing that for you. <laughs>